word. And especially in today's world where we have we have so much fear about not reaching out, about turning into snails and sticking our cute little heads back into our shells. Well, this is we, we can't afford that nowadays. And, we can't. And, and this is exactly what I feel you, you are doing. You are you are taking these individuals and saying, hey, look, look what is possible out here. Story after story, interview after interview, this is what I find you doing. Well, you're knocking me speechless here, and I'm never speechless. Well, this is what you're, you were, <laughs> you're right. I never heard that before. <laughs> so, so I have an acting background. I started out wanting to be a performer. And so I use this example of, um, first asking people if they will improv with me, if they'll play with me. And so you have to say yes. You can't say no. <laughs> then the um, improv ends if you say no. Uh-huh. And then I tell the story and say, you know, imagine there's an you're, you're in the audience, you're watching a performance and there's an actor on stage and the actor is waving his arms and speaking in this grand voice and doing everything he can to to have you feel something, to get your attention, to engage you in this performance. And also at the same time on stage, there happens to be a fly. Mm hmm. And it's just buzzing around the stage, doing what flies do. Tell me honestly, which one are you watching? (laughs) And everyone always laughs and says, I'm watching the fly. Mm -hmm. And so why? Because doing what it was meant to do, it's absolutely brilliant and captivating. And this this comes out of a theory, Sanford Meisner, I believe, uh, the... um, the reality of doing versus the doing of doing. Wow. Say, say that again. The reality of doing mm-hmm. versus the doing of doing. Oh, I like that. And, and an actor who totally captivates you is can, can create, can be in the reality of doing. All those actors who we love, uh, and then the ones we don't, right? Some, mm-hmm. of, some of them are not as skilled at their craft as others. And I think that holds true everywhere, whether it is, it's, uh, it, it's someone who works in an office, whether it's someone who's in the political arena, whether it's someone selling something, that when you are in the reality of doing, that it's truly where you're supposed to be in your life, you are brilliant and captivating. People can't stop watching you. When you're in the doing of doing, saying, well, I have to do this, or I'm a coach, so I've got to produce a workshop or a webinar, and I've got to. People tell me I need to. And and you're, you're in that action of doing as opposed to being. I think it makes, I think it makes a difference. And for me... These And I think for you, too, these conversations that we have with people, I call them deep conversations that awaken, inspire, and activate. They, they are uh, intimate conversations that we're having with each other. It's, it's our place to be there and to have those voices heard. So, so to me, what I do is my reality of doing that I really can't help myself, even though there are a lot of people who wish I could, like, you know, say, how long are you going to keep doing this? How are, are you making any money at this? Are you, <laughs> you know, and, and all of those, um, all of those questions that come up and they're normal questions they are not wrong for asking those questions, but th- it's just something we have to do. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and you, you, can, can you tell us, awaken, inspire, and what else did you say? Activate. And activate. When you're activated, it's the thing where you either want more of something or you say, no, that can't happen. That's not going to happen on my watch. I have to do something about it. Or or you might say, well, oh, there's something really missing here. There needs to be this other piece. If that were there, everything would be okay. We get we get activated all the time when we read the paper. If we're mm-hmm. you know, on Facebook, we get activated. So far, we've only got a like button, but we could also get activated in a lot of other ways. 
uh, the news. People watch the news, uh, or they, you know, they, um, someone tells them a story, and we get activated in some way. And I think part of our job is to help people who get activated stay activated. Mm-hmm. Don't let it fade away. Mm-hmm. If there, if it's if it's your thing to do, then go out and do it. You know, no matter what, no matter what it takes, just do it. Don't don't let it fade into the background of of daily life and tell yourself you're too busy or you've got too many obligations or just you get to make it up you get to create it and if it's important enough find a way to sustain it you you know what linda i i find you in a direction rather than a path a direction yeah yeah A, a direction is is very interesting it's a very interesting concept okay so let's say that you internally have a, a calling or a very deep inspiration or it's written on your soul to, to travel a direction. And paths, oh, you're following a path. Uh, that's, you know, this is, uh, what path are you following? Okay, well, that's, we hear it. But something tells me that you can be following a path as long as it is fitting your direction but when that path starts to veer off to the right or to the left where it is no longer according to your direction you then become a you then step off the path and you start to blaze your own trail and this is this is how I feel of what you're doing. Uh, this is what I see that you're doing with your program and your creation, regardless what uh, monetary <laughs> non-existence there is in this. I mean, some days it would be really nice, Slade, right? <laughs> well, yeah, and- yeah. You know, who knows? Who knows? Ne- never. My mother always said, "Never, ever say never." You know. So you know, I'm following her advice. But but this but that this is what I see of you is is that is that you are you've stepped off a path and and you are you are walking a direction. Well, I love that, and I'm going to take that with me. I'm going to I'm going to spend some time processing that because that feels like it's deserving of um, of some processing. Mm-hmm. And well, so thank well, you, yeah, thank you, and, for and, and here I am behind you, and I'm kind of stepping. Hey, you made it easier for me. See. <laughs> Well, and I think you, you know, you too, when I, when I think about, you know, when I think about what you do, I, you know, I get curious wanting to know what, what inspires you, what motivates you, what, what activates you to keep producing and hosting and finding more voices. Mm. Well, I think, it's, I think I just fall in love. Then I just say there, there's a yes inside of me. This is a person who I would just love to reach out and love to connect with. And if they're willing, you know, to be a guest on Authenticity Radio, that, that's, that's how I identify people. And, and like you, I am doing so much learning uh, along the way. And, and I have made some wonderful friendships and some very deep friendships from the people uh, that have come on to the program. I, I love the idea of, of creating a hospitable environment for something so life-giving that other people can recognize it and say, oh my God, yes, me too. That's, I guess that's what I try to do on my programs is get to the point where, where that yes happens. Yeah, and you do, and you, you know, we we both, I think, create spaces for this possibility. Yeah, spaces. Yeah, of, sounds good. Of what could happen when two people sit down to each other? Where where could it go? And and it's not like a sitcom where in you know twenty six minutes we're solving the world's problems. Sometimes, and you, this may be true for you too, and I'm sure it is. We end up asking more questions at the end than we started with. You know, that we walk away and think, now, well, now I'm asking questions about this, or now I'm not so sure about that. And that just feels so rich. It just feels like such a great place to be that, you know, I'm not here to give you an answer. 
I'm here to create more questions. So you question everything. Yeah, yeah. Questions. That's a what, what a fertile place to go to. It is. Yeah. It is. And the word fertile was coming up for me too. That it's it's just this rich place that we don't often look because we want to solve it all. We want to fix it. Mm-hmm. And it, and it sometimes it just can't be done, especially as if we go back to talking about humanity. Mm-hmm. We're on、um, a conscious evolutionary journey. And I've often, I've often said, we are all, not just you and me. We are all acting on these passionate impulses, these passionate urges to do sustainable things. We that we may never actually see、mm-hmm. or or actualize.、Mm-hmm. It it may happen well beyond. The time that we're here on this earth, and yet we do it with such purpose, with such passion, and I, I just think that's one of the most amazing things about being conscious as an evolutionary. We're we're not going to get the satisfaction unless we do, you、mm-hmm. know, of seeing it.、Mm-hmm. We are we're setting、um, when you talk about direction that. That kind of brings that home for me, Slade. We have a direction, and that is whether it's the next seven generations, it, whether, whether it is the sustainability of humanity or, or Earth. We don't know what the outcome is going to be,、mm-hmm. and yet we work with all our hearts and souls to create something that we hope will have impact. On that world that we may not even be here to see. That's、yeah, so I, powerful, I, Linda. Wow. I'm so in love with all of us. I'm so in love using using your word that we can actually commit and do that.、Mm-hmm. Faith in something bigger than who we are as an individual. Faith in love. Faith in you and I working together, side by side, shoulder by shoulder. Faith in reaching out and believing in love. Faith in love in action. And if we can change just one heart out of all of our listeners, I mean, look what Mother Teresa was able to do. Martin Luther King Jr. Mahatma Gandhi. Was able to do just one heart, and these hearts—I don't know what a, <laughs> hearts on fire. I don't know what it is, but these individuals were able to shift populations and to make possible the improbable in the face of dire and devastating, f- fearful existence. You know, being able to shift one heart. To change one heart at a time is such powerful business, you know. And this is what I believe that you are doing, Linda Lobardo. Well, then you too, Slate Suter. I know that was absolutely <laughs> freaking beautiful. That was so fabulous what you just said. Really, yeah, yeah. And 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 individuals, everyone out there. I, you know, I I'm no different than anyone else out there. Following something they feel passionate about, or that feels important to him or her, except I'm choosing to do it on internet radio and and blogging and choosing to speak, you know, in in public forums about what I'm I'm doing, and that makes me no more important, maybe a little louder. But no more important, and not certainly not better than someone who is just silently doing their work somewhere in the world. You know, holding someone's hand or doing something that changes one person's life somehow. And there is so much of that going on in the world, and yet, you know, if it bleeds, it leads. And so, we need to know more about. Really, who we are as as humanity. As you were speaking, I I was thinking it's it's that 
that dual purpose of being 